Many times, people have talked about how racism have affected the black community and various black leaders stood up to defend and protect black communities against systemic racism. One of such leaders is Khalid Abdul Mohamed, an African-American activist who became a prominent figure in the Nation of Islam and later the New Black Panther Party. Listen to his interview with Duna Yu and I will share my thoughts later. Pay attention. Can you please tell me why it's blacks who are killing hundreds of thousands of blacks in, in Rwanda and other places? And can you please tell me why from Haiti, blacks from Haiti are just risking their lives to come here to the United States of America? I'll tell you if I get a chance. Black people have been robbed, as I said earlier, of a knowledge of self. And when you rob people, sir, of a knowledge of self, then it means that they, be, they start to take on the characteristics and the nature of their oppressor and their colonizer. And his mind, by automatic, systematic, remote control, rules in our people. He gives them the guns and the weapons and the drugs and the alcohol, the way you did our brothers, the red man and the red woman, brothers and sisters, the way you did our Latino brothers and sisters, and then you pit one against the other and then say, look at what these people are doing. Yes. Adolf Hitler perpetrated the Holocaust. Uh, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. Adolf Hitler perpetrated the Holocaust on 11 million people that died, 6 million of which were Jews, 5 million were others. Am I to understand that you would very much support his way of doing things and him for that matter? <laughs> Sir. This is not reverse racism nor discrimination that you could tie into your statement on Hitler. If the slave master is whipping the slave and blood is running down the slave's back and the slats incidentally where the term cracker comes from, from the cracker man who was crack, had the crack of the whip on the slave's back, but if the slave takes the slave master's whip from him and starts whipping the slave master with his own whip, that is not reverse racism, that is not reverse discrimination, that is the slave getting out from under the yoke of bondage and oppression. I don't advocate what Hitler has done before the world. Hitler's struggle, I went to the Holocaust Memorial Museum and I tried to separate Hitler as a freak of nature from the rest of white people. But after all that we have gone through, I know that there's a little bit of Hitler in all white people and a lot of Hitler. And we'll be back in just a moment. To the uh, Jewish brother up there, well not brother, but the Jewish man. What about Goldstein, who slaughtered 39 Palestinians and became a Jewish hero? Publicly, rabbi said what about the fingernails? Dr. Collins said that the rabbi said that the fingernail of one Jew was worth more than all of the Arabs in the world. And the New York Times ran the lead story with the photo showing the Jews fouling past his grave. Yes. They not only called him a hero, but a saint. Yes, may I make this point, Mr. Muhammad? The atrocity perpetrated by Goldstein was roundly and publicly condemned by the entire leadership of the Jewish community in America as well as the uh, leaders of uh, the state of Israel. Let me ask you this. They publicly condemned that action and I can't even get you to look into the camera and convey the, even the remotest notion that you have in your heart some love for two Jews who died trying to save black people in the South. I speak of you cannot Swimmer get me to look into the camera and do that. Yeah. May I ask? Well, may I ask you to kindly speak to that? You cannot get me to look into the camera and show love for two Jews. I don't even know them. I live with this pain and suffering every day among my own people. Look at our babies there in the Oakland, in the Bay Area. They're watching Schindler's List. You have your Schindler's List, but for us it's been a Swindler's List because someone is attempting to steal our birthright. They stopped the movie. Take our babies out of the movie as though it's such a moral outrage. And then Spielberg comes in. The governor comes in. 
What about the statements of the Jew, Howard Stern, the comedian, Jackie Mason? What about Moshe Dayan? What about the fact that members of the Senate have made racist comments and Congress and they were voting against me, but they were not brought up by their own colleagues in that so-called august body? Yes. Yeah. Hello. What I'd like to point out is just as you said that you can't judge all black people by one person, you can't judge white people by just Hitler. What you have to realize is, is that we're in a diverse nation, which is America, and we have a lot to learn from everybody in this room. I feel I do. From all black people, all white people, and anyone else who happens to be in this room with me. America's the first Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mohammed, could you please tell me, does Islam believe in Judaism and Christianity? And under Islam, are Jews and Christians are people of the book? Do you believe that? And further, do you believe, sir, that one people and one book sent by the same one God? And you refer to the people up front that they are your brothers. Is it possible, Mohammed, Mr. Mohammed, that I am your brother also? And is it also possible that we are brothers truly responsible for each other? Is that possible? The Holy Quran says that the messenger of God believes in what has been revealed, and so do the believers. And I am a believer. In Islam, we believe in one God whose personal and proper name is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that one God, we believe, sent all the prophets and the great ones in the great line of divine, and we believe in all of the revealed scriptures. I don't know you, sir. I could feel that if you were attempting to live according to the law of God, then you might be my brother in the faith but not my brother by nature. Right. <laughs> Mr. Muhammad, Mr. Muhammad, are you aware, Mr. Muhammad, that the courts martial system on or about or in or about World War II condemned many black sailors for their involvement in handling munitions where many of them died as a result of their handling these munitions. Would you believe, Mr. Muhammad, that the Jewish war veterans that I'm proud to represent took this issue on and we have condemned the United States Navy as it relates to the deaths of these sailors and we have condemned them for their continuance dishonorable discharge of these black sailors. I ask you, Mr. Muhammad, what have you done on this specific issue? Well, it's kind of difficult to believe you on anything, but I would say this, that I do know that during that same war that America was, as is today, so racist until the German officers, when they were captured, could eat in the same mess hall and have the same accommodations as the white American officers. But the black troops were segregated, couldn't come into that mess hall unless they were scrubbing the floors and washing dishes. So it was a white man honoring another white man, though one was American and one was German and they were supposed to be enemies, there was still a tie that was able to bind the two together. And we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> You want to show that? What is that? Is that a... Uh... It's a black man being burned alive with an audience like this cheering and applauding and tiptoeing to get in the picture. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, hi. Um, yes. Yes. I'm representing Queens College, and everyone is talking about uh, what's been denied, but the problem that we have as students is our history is not being taught in the textbook. Right. And by me being a student and a citizen of America, I would like to know when is that time going to come so you can learn about my history and understand my people. We are not in your books. Yes. Sir. Yes.
Yes, Phil, I like to say that, you know, what he's saying is being backed up by Jewish scholars as well. This is not only the information that Khalid has. Jewish scholars have the information. I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. He came to Fort Worth, Texas, where the police department is killing black men wholesale. Six black men have been killed in less than a year. But through his effort, there's been a change on the gang members' part in our community. So we appreciate Brother Khalid. Yeah. This gentleman, this gentleman is Yes, yes, sir. Being an educated college person, I see that you can always bring up events like this that where people have been killed and mass murders from all people. Let's learn off the past and not make high school comments like yours and put down Hitler-like manners and try to form peace and learn off the past and from the future. Sir, you wanted to say. Sir. Right here. Yes, sir. I I'd like to see us lay to rest this whole notion of anti-Semitism. The one thing that is an incorrect, incorrect statement, because the whole idea of a Semite, Semites were people who lived in Southwestern Asia, including Northeast Africa and the Arabian Peninsula, who spoke Ugaritic, who spoke Jeez, who spoke Ethiopic, spoke Hebrew, who, 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 who right. spoke Arabic. Right. Those are our people. We are a Semitic people. Therefore, we cannot be anti-Semitic. Ashkenazic Jews are calling us anti-Semitic. We cannot be anti-Semitic because we are the descendants of a Semitic people. Let's lay that to rest. That was a weapon in the hands of the Jews since 1870. They used it against other people, but it doesn't work against Beautiful. people in Northeast Africa. Thank you. Beautiful. Uh, sir, I, 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 I can't believe exactly what I'm hearing. We went to war in World War II to fight for the freedom of speech. We didn't fight for a freedom of speech of hatred. Many of our members, I'm a national commander of Jewish war veterans, and over 50,000 of our men died They're fighting for your right to free speech here now. I don't understand why you come out with such hatred. Phil, excuse me. Phil, yes. Mr. Phil. Muhammad. Sir. You, you make me sick to my stomach with that. Because at the same time also. that you were fighting, you were not no, fighting for the freedom and independence of black people. Soldiers, black soldiers in segregated companies lost their lives on foreign soil there, but would have to come back and fight just to get a bite to eat and not have to go to the toilet on the side of the road somewhere in the bushes. So you're nothing but hypocrites and you won't pull that small time stuff over on me. Yes, ma'am. Why don't we talk about how the merchant Jews come into our black neighborhoods and they suck the life and the, and, and the money out of our neighborhoods and put it back into their neighborhoods? Briefly, sir. Briefly. First of all, I'd like to say peace to all the guards and the earths and all the people that came here to, uh, to represent. Um, Brother Khaled is definitely uh, a true warrior in the cause of black struggle. Right. What I'd like to say as a young black youth is that I feel that America has sub subjected me to a holocaust. You understand? From, from all my ancestors all the way back to even right now, Rodney King, the brother Staten Island, mm -hmm. all we've been subject to is death and destruction here. And as far as Jewish people in the Bible, say that you are of the synagogue of Satan. And I'd like to what ask you people, why do you feel that you have cornered the market on sympathy? And why can't you feel the pain of the black holocaust? Why do you think that when we say the black holocaust that it's some blasphemous statement? I'd like for y'all to address that. Yes. All right. Beautiful. First of all, sir. Yes, first of all, with regard to the last speaker, the NAACP was partially founded by Jews. But now I'll get to my question. All right, now let me, let me, all right, let me just say, let me just say one final point. Go ahead. Eldridge Cleaver once said, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And I'd like to just end this show, hopefully, by some positive note and ask Khalid if perhaps he'd tell us what his real agenda is. Is it just to go out and try to talk about hating people, or are we going to try, are we going to have a race war, or are we going to have some, are we going to have cooperation? Are we going to try to work together? Yes, thank you for the question. I'll give you an opportunity to answer that question when we come back in just a moment. To our agreement with uh, Khalid Muhammad, I'm pleased to uh, share this number f with you. This is the Black African Holocaust Council 800 number, 1-800-859-0170. I say again, this 800 number is 859-0170, the Black African Holocaust Council. The gentleman has a question of Mr. Muhammad. Um, are we going to preach hate? 
Are we going to have a race war? Where are we going and what would you like to do to uh, promote where you think we should go? We are taught by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to show courtesy, respect, and kindness, to be polite to all people as long as they are courteous, respectful, kind, and polite to us. But we must look at the fact that we don't teach hatred. Everywhere we go as black people, we face hatred. Look at it. Look at it. Angel food cake, white people say, is white. Devil's food cake, you say, is black. You wear white to weddings and black to funerals. Black ball, black male. You give us a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, pale-skinned, buttermilk complexion Jesus in contradiction to the black Jesus with nappy hair in the Bible. Our own babies, according to behavioral, sci behavioral scientists, our baby girls, when confronted when choosing, with choosing between a black doll and a white doll, there has been so much damage done, they choose the white doll and say the black doll is ugly. So racism is everywhere and it's institutionalized. We cannot really be racist because racism is prejudice plus Power. Nothing I say up here nor anywhere in the world will impact stop fronting, will impact on any white folks in this audience on your job, in politics, in economics, in housing, in the society. We don't have the power to do that, so we cannot be racist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I would just like to say to, to this gentleman, I would like to say to this gentleman and all other people who are not blessed with melanin at this point in time, to understand that what has happened in our history is that you have been misinformed as much as we have been misinformed. Much of the information that is brought forth, not only from Dr. Muhammad, but other areas, other scholars, are not available to you, as a sister said, in your curriculums that you have for 400 years when you did not allow us to read and write and was being hidden. Whether you, sir, personally did that or not, it was a legacy that was passed on to you. And I end by saying the Holocaust is simply the greatest atrocity on film. Ours was not filmed. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I don't understand Islam. I am a Christian. May, may I have your attention, please? Certainly. But I am a Christian, and you mentioned Jesus. And let's go back historically and see what Jesus did. Jesus died for me, and he died for you. Jesus is a God that loves all men, and all men are created equal. I just wanted to answer the gentleman over his question. This young man wants to answer you. With respect to the race war, there will be a battle between black and white. And I fast and pray today that God, Allah, in his good time, remove all white folks from the planet Earth. And we'll be back in just a moment. I feel the gentleman over there made a incorrect statement that really was not necessary. That's all. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Second left. Second. Yes, ma'am. I just want to say that my love and loyalty goes to Dr. Muhammad. Um, and sister over here is a little lost. She got the contact lenses and, you know, the fake lenses. But we won't go into that, you know. It's no news. All right. Um, my point is, um, there is... You know, we, we seem to be attacking issues that really have no relevance. This is one man. Throughout history, there have been instances of systemic racism and discrimination against black people in many parts of the world, including slavery, segregation, and institutionalized racism. These historical injustices have created lasting social and economic disparities that can influence attitudes and perceptions. People often inherit biases and prejudice from their families, communities, and broader societal influences. If someone grows up in an environment where negative stereotypes about certain racial or ethnic groups are common, they may internalize these beliefs without critically examining them. Media representation can also shape perception of different racial groups. Historically, black people have often been portrayed in negative or stereotypical way in media, which can reinforce biases and contribute to negative attitudes. In some cases, racial prejudice may be fueled by economic competition or perceived threat 
to one status or resources. This can lead to scapegoating and discrimination against certain racial or ethnic groups. Lack of exposure and understanding sometimes prejudice stems from a lack of exposure to people from different backgrounds and cultures. When individuals only interact with people who are similar to themselves, they may develop narrow or skewed views of other groups. It is essential to challenge and confront these prejudices and stereotypes through education, dialogue, and meaningful interaction with people from diverse backgrounds. Building empathy, understanding, and respect for all individuals regardless of race or ethnicity is crucial for creating a more inclusive and equitable society. And there you have it guys, kindly share your opinion in the comment box below and do not forget to like this video so YouTube can share this video with more people like you. Until next time, cheers and have a good one.